Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Basic Electronics 1. This lecture is part two of the Thevenin's theory discussion. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about multi-source networks using Thevenin's theorem, superposition theorem, and we're going to wrap up with a maximum power transfer theorem. And as I alluded to earlier in the earlier lecture, uh, this is version two of this YouTube uh, video lecture because after 215,000 hits, I definitely needed to redo this because of audio quality issues. So if you're looking for the earlier lectures, they're probably gone. They've been replaced by this one. Okay, so same stuff, just better audio. Okay, so we left off our discussion in our last lecture with single source networks and we we're determining the third, excuse me, the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. And we left off with this. Here is a two source network, and we are going to use the superposition theorem to solve for the Thevenin's theorem to demonstrate the maximum power transfer theorem. And one thing I need to you to understand right now, the superposition theorem is not the Thevenin's theorem, okay? I am using the superposition theorem to solve the Thevenin's theorem, okay? So if you have not practiced superposition theorem, please go back to some of the earlier lectures detailing the superposition theorem. And again, we are going to tie Thevenin's theorem in with a very closely related theorem at the end, the maximum power transfer theorem. Okay, so we have two sources in this network and we want to solve for the Thevenin's equivalent. Well, let's do step one. Um, we're going to mark our terminals in this particular case. It's A and B. We're going to do step two. We're going to remove our RL. And step three, find RTH with the resources removed. OK, so remove our 12 volt source hooked up in that fashion with a short. Remove our two amp current source with an open. There you go. That's all it is. Find RTH. What's RTH? From here, from this perspective here, from the perspective of the load resistor. To me, it looks like a 30 in parallel with a 10 and 40 in series. So a 30 in parallel with a 50. Should give us a Thevenin equivalent resistance of 18.75 ohms. We're halfway. We're actually, we're a third of the way there because we've got two sources. So go ahead and have our resultant ETH right there and our RTH, which we just determined is 18.75 ohms. OK, so now let's go ahead and find ETH. We're going to have to do this twice because we have to find the open circuit voltage at the terminals of interest for two sources. Which one are we going to do first? Let's do our 12 volt source hooked up in the following fashion. OK, with a 12 volt source hooked up in the following fashion, what are we going to see? Again. Use a different color. That's a 12 volt source. Here's our 40 ohm resistor. Here's our 10 ohm resistor. Here's a 30 ohm resistor. Source current is most likely going to go that way. What is it? It's seeing a 40 in series with a 10, in series with a 30. So it's an 80 ohm source resistance, total resistance, with a 12 volt source. What is that source current? Should be 12 over 80. We're going to see 150 milliamps. OK? Is that what we're looking for? Nope. It's a means to an end. 
Okay, so we figured out there's 150 milliamps going through the 40, the 10, and the 30 in series. And that's the critical point there, is that 30 ohm resistor in series. is going to have a voltage drop plus to minus this way. So voltage across the 30 is equal to the current through the 30 times the resistance, 150 milliampers, times 3, 4.5 volts in this direction. 4.5 volts minus plus 12 volts this way. So we're going to have to do a little bit of KVL magic here to determine the Thevenin and equivalent voltage seen for this particular source because the source is actually across those open circuit terminals. And there's two ways to think about this. Here's A, here's B. The voltage at B is 12 volts. The voltage at A, 4.5 volts. So VA. VB. According to our terminology, VAB is equal to VA minus VB. 4.5 minus 12 is equal to minus 7.5 volts. So one could say that the Thevenin equivalent voltage seen between A and B is plus minus 7.5 volts. So plus minus 7.5 volts. Do you see what I'm saying? See this plus minus minus 7.5 volts? One could easily just say this too. Plus minus 7.5 volts. That's how I'd like to do it. Because very similar to our superposition theorem, direction matters. Okay? So just stop right there and just be like, okay. Seven and a half volts, but it's in this orientation with a plus minus. Okay, so we've already solved it. So let's wipe all of this clear. We've all already solved it for the 12 volt source. So what do we determine? It was plus minus 7.5 volts. Okay, get rid of that guy. What do we replace it with? A short. Put back in our current source. What was it? It was two amps. Okay, now we have to determine the voltage, the open circuit voltage again, from the perspective, excuse me, from the terminals A and B. But our source, our current source, is looking this way. What resistance does it see? Well, there is no passable path of current here, so that's an open circuit. So there's going to be no current that goes that way. However, at this point, that two amps is going to divide. One leg's going to go this way, one leg's going to go that way. What's the resistance it sees in those legs? That one's 40. That one's also 40, because it's a 10 in a series with a 30. So won't expect that two amps would divide evenly. I should actually be doing this in a different color, according to my previous rules. In lecture, 2 amps, seeing a 40, and a 40 in parallel. Perfectly split it with 1 amp, 1 amp. OK, so what is 1 amp through a 40 ohm resistor? Well, it's 40 volts. But is that what we're seeing? No, no, no. We're seeing 1 amp through that 30 because our terminal is right there okay so what is the voltage drop across a 30 ohm resistor with one amp quite simply 30 volts what's its orientation plus minus 30 volts that way okay so now here we go here's the end of the superposition theorem the end of the superposition theorem is who wins out obviously plus minus 30 volts versus minus plus 7.5 volts. So our total ETH could be rewritten as ETH 
ETH minus ETH blue. So ETH red, if you will, double prime. If, if our red, if we consider our red double prime and our blue single prime, i.e. the first source I did it. So what do we get? 30 minus 7.5, 22.5 volts. In which orientation? Plus minus. So 22.5 volts plus minus. We have solved the Thevenin's equivalent of that circuit using the superposition theorem. OK? So now, let's go ahead, just for the heck of it, put in a load resistor in there. And this is going to lead up to our discussion on the maximum power transfer theorem. And for the heck of it, let's just go ahead and put in a 100 ohm resistor. I need you to solve for IL, VL, power delivered to the load, total power, and efficiency. Okay? So don't use this circuit. Okay, I know your first impulse is to go ahead, I'm okay, I'm gonna solve it using this. Don't. We are already solved for the Thevenin's equivalent. This circuit right here. is a lot easier to solve than our above circuit. Because what is my IL? Well, it's a series circuit. 22.5 volts over my total combined resistance of 118.75 ohms should give me 189.5 milliampers. What's the voltage across my load resistor? Well, it's 100 ohms with 189.5 milliampers, 18.95 volts. What's the power delivered to the load? Well, it's the current through the load times the voltage of the load. Or it's I squared R, or it's V squared divided by R. Either way, 3.59 watts. OK, power total. What is the total power delivered by the source? Well, it's a 22.5 volt source that's providing 189 milliampers of current. That's 4.26 watts. Okay, what's my efficiency? Power out divided by power in. What's my power out? What's my power to my load? What's my power in? It's my total power. Okay, can it ever be more than 100%? No. If you get something greater than 100%, you've done something wrong. What do you get? It's normally expressed as a percentage. 84% efficient. Okay, now my question to you is, what load resistor for this circuit will give the maximum power? You could put in a number of different resistors and just do the figuring. Okay, so we did that for 100, R100. And I'm just going to guess. R4, 4 ohm resistor. Go ahead and put it in this circuit. We're replacing our load resistor with a 4 ohm resistor. Okay, what is our current there? IL, VL, PL, PT, and our efficiency. Has our power gone up or down? Well, let's look at the current. For a 4 ohm resistor in there, our total resistance has gone down. One would expect our current to go up. So one would immediately think, OK, if current has gone up, the power has gone up. But wait a second. Our voltage will go down significantly because, according to the voltage divider rule, 4 is smaller than 18.75. So it's going to see less voltage. What's power going to do? Is it going to go up or down? Do the numbers, OK? So if you do the numbers, you should get a 989 milliampers of current. It's gone substantially up. Our voltage to the load, 3.96 volts. It's gone down. What's that done? Will it go up or down? I don't know. Let's do the numbers. 
voltage times current, 3.9 watts. It's gone up. It hasn't gone up a lot, though. Okay? What's my total power, though? Okay? So total power delivered by a 22.5 volt source, providing 989 milliampers of current, 22.3 watts. Power has gone up, but efficiency has drastically suffered as 17.6%. Okay? So one could do this bracketing approach all day. That's again for a 4 ohm resistor. And pick a 1,000 ohm resistor. Pick a 20 ohm resistor. You could do this all day. Or there's this thing called a computer with an Excel spreadsheet that you can do this. And right here is the same circuit with power delivered to the load as a function of load resistance. And if you see my cursor right here, what is that value right there at which we get maximum power? Believe it or not, it is the Thevenin and equivalent resistance. Okay. So what the maximum power transfer theorem states is RL will receive maximum power when it is equal to the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Okay? So do the numbers. IL, VL, PL, PT, efficiency when RL is equal to 18.75 ohms. Go ahead and replace our 4 ohm resistor. 18.75, 18.75. And what you'll find, if you do the numbers or let the computer just do it for you, voltage to the load, 11.25 volts, current, 600 milliampers, power to the load, 6.75 watts. Substantially higher than our 3.59 earlier and our 3.9. So we have achieved the maximum power. Where are we? We're right here at the peak. And our power total, though, power total for a 22.5 volt source delivering 600 milliampers, it's 13.5 watts. Our efficiency, 50%. So even though I'm getting maximum power transferred to my load resistor, when my load resistor is equivalent to the Thevenot equivalent resistance, my efficiency is at 50%. That is the maximum power transfer theorem. Basically, to achieve the maximum power, my equivalent excuse me, my load resistance has to be equivalent to my Thevenin equivalent resistance. What is the efficiency at maximum power? It's 50%. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this series of lectures dealing with superposition, Thevenin's theorem, multi-source network Thevenin's theorem, and the maximum power transfer theorem.